I'm sharing my screen, just a second. Is everything all right with the screen? Yes, and we can hear you. Okay, great, I'll start. Uh, so thank you, Yuri, and I also want to thank the organizers for the invitation. I'm going to speak about uh, optimization of full RSB spherical models. Let me start with the definition of the models. Uh, these are random functions, which are defined on the unit sphere. Actually, they are even um, random polynomials, as you see in a second. And for those of you who are familiar with the models, I'm using here a slightly different normalization and working with the unit sphere. Um, the first models are defined are the pure PSP models. So they define, you choose a, a parameter P and you use the following formula. Here, X is a vector on the sphere or in our end. So X, I are the coordinates and you go over all possible monomials of the grid P and you multiply each one of them by an IAD Gaussian. Okay, so in some sense, this is the most natural way to define a homogeneous random polynomial. And the mixed PSP models are linear combinations of such uh, models. Here I'm assuming that the H and P are independent. And to choose a model, you just choose a sequence of parameters, gamma P, and we are interested in the large n limit of, of uh, to study the function as n goes to infinity and gamma p are fixed. And the problem I will talk about is an optimization problem. Uh, what we want to do is given the function, find a point where it, the function attains roughly the maximal value or maximal energy. So first let me comment that uh, in these models, if you normalize the maximum by n, then it has a limit, which uh, I denote by E star. This is called the ground state energy. And such configurations or points are called ground state configuration, X star as in the equation. And to be precise, what you get as an input are the coefficient J, which define the random function. And we want an algorithm that produces such a point with minimal time complexity. Of course, if you don't care about the if you just search for the point uh, by sampling the, the function, uh, you get within an error of epsilon, it will take you exponential time. And, and what I'll show you is that in some models, you can uh, optimize in polynomial time. Now, let me define uh, P max as the maximal value of P such that gamma P is not zero, because uh, the number of coefficients that you use to define HN is roughly is of the order of n to the p max. So the way I stated this problem, I need p max to be uh, finite in order not to have uh, infinite complexity. The theorem I want to show you is a uh, sense that under some condition, which I'll talk about in a minute, assuming this p max is finite, you can optimize within epsilon error in the best uh, uh, complexity you can hope for. Just n to the p max. And this condition is that at zero temperature, the support of the Parisi measure is the whole interval 0, 1. So I'm not going to define uh, exactly what it means, but I will tell you some consequences of this condition that are relevant to the optimization problem. And also, I will tell you about an explicit condition which is equivalent. So for the spherical models, we know that this condition about the support of the Parisi measure, you can check it by constructing the mixture polynomial. So that's a one a polynomial in one variable, deterministic. Uh, you just use the gamma p. And you can check whether this function or the second uh, derivative of this function to the power of minus f is concave on 0, 1. That exactly characterizes this condition models with this con which satisfy this con condition about uh, the support of the Parisi measure. And before I move on, let me, I, I want to mention that in the easing case, namely when you optimize over the hypercube in instead of the hypersphere, a similar result was derived by uh, Montanari for the SK model and more generally for mixed models by El Alawi, Montanari and Selke. Okay, so, the following, uh, what I'm going to tell you about in this slide is for any spherical model. So 
with high probability there exists a tree whose vertices are points inside the ball and the root is the origin and the leaves of this tree are points of the sphere of radius one. And it has the following properties. First of all, any two edges on this tree are orthogonal. Okay, so any, so this is the maximal orthogonality you can expect in this structure. And secondly, this is relevant to the optimization problem because we are interested in maximal point with maximal energy. Any point on the tree, any of the vertex or the vertices, uh, the energy at, at any of the vertices is maximal over the, sp the sphere of the same radius. Okay, and uh, let me remark on the interior of the ball, I define Hn by the similar formula we used for the sphere. Lastly, uh, the number of levels in this tree depend on the size of the support of the Parisian model. So in this picture, this is the so-called uh, three, rep three step replica symmetry breaking, where you have uh, the, the depth of the tree is three, but the case I'm interested in where the support is zero, is the interval zero one. In this case, the number of levels goes to infinity as n goes to infinity. And uh, you'll have vertices at all radii between zero one, at least asymptotically. Okay, so we have this huge structure we are interested in the leaves of this tree. These are points on the sphere of radius one. We would like to get one of them, for example, that will be a ground state configuration. And of course we cannot pick a point from the tree, but what I want to explain is how you can use this structure with, which has, uh, which you can hope to follow from the origin to the boundary uh, to design an algorithm that optimizes the function. Okay, so I want to look at only one path from this tree. So uh, I'll denote it by XQ and Q is the time parameter and everything is parameterized so that at time Q, the point is it has radius square root of Q and I linearly uh, interpol interpolate between the point because the tree is discrete. And this path will have two properties inherited from the tree. Uh, the first one is a geometric property. The, each segment is orthogonal to the current position because the current position is sum of segments from the tree and we said that all of them are uh, orthogonal. And the second property is again just what we had for the tree but now for this path in, in, the, in the full RSP case, the energy at any point is maximal over the sphere of same radius. And now what I want to do is uh, just think of how I can construct such a path, a path with these two properties by myself without having any access to the uh, ultrametric tree. So all the information I take is that there exists such a path and I take it as only an inspiration for the, for the algorithm. I don't need to use anything for the proof, for the proofs from uh, the tree. Okay, so the geometric property we can just impose by uh, building this path by concatenating many small intervals which have which are all, always orthogonal to the current position. Okay, so vi are just uh, direction which I will have to choose, and xi will be just the sum of the vi's up to this point normalized correctly. Now, what is left to do is to choose the direction so that we maximize the energy at each step. And if you think about it, maybe the first guess is to use a gradient, but assuming that everything went well up to uh, the ith step, that would mean that the energy at the point we have reached is maximal. And therefore the gradient should be roughly zero. And so there is no point of using the gradient for this. And what you can do as the second best uh, guess is to use the Hessian. Yes, I'm going to look at the Hessian on the orthogonal plane to the point where I'm at after I steps. And you can choose any direction, essentially any direction which is in the span of the large, uh, of the eigenvectors corresponding to the large, largest uh, eigenvalue. 
Okay. And actually, this algorithm works. This algorithm will uh, lead you to a point with the right energy. So let me uh, describe the algorithm precisely. You just pick some large number k, which will be the number of steps we take from the origin to the sphere of radius one, and some small number of delta, which will be some error. The initialization is not very important. You can choose any point you want with, this, uh, with radius one over square root k. And then at each step, I'm going to do the following. I will choose a direction p, so it has length one, and it's orthogonal to the current position. I also want to require that the projection onto the gradient is going to be positive. This is just, uh, uh, I'm going to use a Taylor expansion, so that condition only means that the gradient will not ruin anything. And, and note also that if I have a direction V which does not satisfy this inequality, I can just flip it. I can take minus V and get uh, this property. The important thing is that you're going to choose V so that the second order term in a Taylor approximation will be the maximal you can get up to a, an error of delta. This is the same delta that we start with. And all you're going to do is update the step. You're going to take a small step in this direction. You continue, you start from the origin and continue until you reach the uh, sphere of radius one. And what you can guarantee is that for the models with, for which the support of the Parisi measure is zero one, is the interval zero one, you get the following lower bound on the energy. It's the maximal energy you can get up to an error of epsilon. And this epsilon can be as small as you wish, provided that K is large enough and delta is small enough. And as for time complexity, each iteration, each run of, of this algorithm takes uh, essentially n to the degree of of uh, new the mixture. And we have constant that depends on delta and, another, and we need to multiply this by k. So that would be the constant that appeared uh, in the original theorem. Uh, now let me sketch the proof. It's going to be just one slide. So we have this path that we construct and we choose the direction according, the directions according to the Hessian. And what we want to do is control the energy on this path. Uh, so, a priori, we need to control the, the Hessian on a random path because this path is chosen randomly, but you can do even better. You can control the Hessian over all points inside this, in the ball of radius one. And roughly speaking, what you can show is that if you look at the Hessian on the orthogonal space, then its edge is going to be uh, approximately two times nu double prime of Q to the power of minus half. So now to control the energy, at each step, I'm just going to Taylor expand up to second order. The first order term I just removed because in the algorithm I, I chosen the direction to be, uh, to have positive projection onto the gradient. So I'm just going to uh, neglect this. And this third term is just the error that you get from Taylor expansion. And of course the orange part here corresponds to the approximation of the edge here. What happens is that if you concatenate uh, many such intervals, you'll approximate the, the bound you get on the energy will approximate the, int the corresponding integral. Okay, so that will be just the integral from zero to Q of this quantity, nu double prime of Q to the minus half. And for the models for which the uh, support of the Parisi measure is the interval zero one, we know what the, uh, we can analyze the Parisi formula explicitly and we get, uh, we can show that the maximum, it is well known, the maximum is given by the same uh, integral. Okay, so you, you just control the energy on the path and you know by some other argument that this is really the maximal energy and therefore you're done. And that's all. Hmm, 